Reparative economy. Shedding light on the topic. In our life, communities, apostolic works, and pastoral activities, we strive to walk together with the women and men of our time and context, in the way of Jesus, with actions and words that spread hope, that proclaim and serve the kingdom. We feel, like all individuals and families, the constraints of the rhythm of life and the need for means and tools to do what we feel called to do, seeking to do so in simplicity and evangelical poverty. We are more and more aware that we need to give proper attention to the economy in order to integrate it with maturity in our life and mission. It should express our consecration, vow of poverty, our mission, reparative and eucharistic, and our fraternity, humanizing. We continue to seek this awareness. The fruit of this search was Decree 2 of General Congregation 20 on the social and solidarity economy, which set us on the path of conversion to revise ways and styles that are more coherent, more fraternal and more sustainable. We need to follow this path in the spirit of Magi's, concretize it in personal and community choices, and never stop asking selves, do I want it or do I need it? Contemplating his heart leads us to look at the world with active hope. Does it care for or damage the common home? Does it favor or exclude the poor? And given so much consumerism, is what I have enough? During General Congregation 21, we talked about how the charism integrates us and how synodality challenges us. We have also received lights that help us to ground selves in the concrete. The charism integrates us. Our charism extends to our economy and shapes it. For our criteria, choices and ways of life to be authentic, we must be aware that they have economic repercussions and that through them, the charism is being expressed. Poor with the poor Jesus, poverty makes us a gift to others and frees us from any attachment. It reminds us that only G.O.D. is enough and calls us to express this with our own life. Our poverty also configures, in the way of Jesus, to become close to and in solidarity with other realities of poverty, thereby activating hope. Reparative Economy The economy of our institute is not only means to sustain and to further our mission, but it is, in itself, reparative. For example, the way we care for the sisters in community, the criteria of investment choices, our dealings with those with whom we do business, the style, criteria and choices we make in our apostolic works, the standard of living of our communities, the use of our time and other goods, the priorities in our spending, our work and how we treat our employees, our preferences for the weakest, and so forth. Eucharistic Economy Eucharistic experience of economy helps us to decenter selves and to put the person and the whole of creation at the center by caring for the large and small things. We use goods so that everyone has a happy life and to express, in daily life, in the most concrete things, communion, the sense of the body. We are aware of the strong transformative potential that our economic choices must have. Discerning economy. We are women of discernment, called to go beyond norms that equalize us. This makes us freer to dispose of what we need and more respectful of each other's needs. Discernment opens us to processes of searching, choosing and evaluating in order to put our goods at the greater service of the kingdom, both on personal and community level. This requires a deep dialogue, without criticism or distrust, without fear when tension arises between the respect we owe each other and the confrontation necessary for growth. Synodality is challenging U.S. Our economy is also challenged by the concern of the Church and Genial Congregation 21 to grow in synodality. This makes us more aware of the principles by which we should be governed. Subsidiarity, so that each one does what they should do and co-responsibility, so that we all take care of the needs, and all this while collaborating to take care of each other. We will grow only through a sincere dialogue that allows us to assess and to contrast where we are and where we want to go. Ideas that help us to concretize. 
The social and solidarity economy helps us to make decisions about what we consume and reminds us that there are other ways of organizing selves and caring for the earth and relationships. It also reminds us that we have a commitment to transform those structures and habits that are harmful. The SSE has helped us to better understand that all our choices have economic and social dimensions and consequences. It makes respectful coherent and fair proposals that can help us to continue to shape the style and way in which we want to live and to relate to each other. We have taken very important step forward by entering into the concrete proposal of Decree 2, but we want to go deeper. During Genial Congregation 21, we have received interesting proposals that have made us aware of the large number of networks that seek a positive and sustainable impact on society through the economy in a collaborative style. The poverty of Jesus is not an end in itself. It is to make us rich through his poverty. Jesus, in his hidden life, lived on what he earned by his work. He probably had to go to Sephoras, a city under construction near Nazareth. Work as a necessity, Paul worked and combined it with his apostolic activity. What satisfies me? What am I attached to? Am I sharing all that I have, time, ability, ideas and opinions, work, prayer? Do I feel that I am developing my dependence on the community? Do I ask for what I need? Do I ask for what I use? From whom do I receive what I need? Community, family, friends, apostolic worklet. What is my poverty? In my life, in what way can I say that I am poor? How does the reality of poverty and injustice influence my life, my attitudes, my worship? How do I collaborate in household chores, in the practical aspects of community life? How do I look at the poor? How does my community approach the poor? How do I free myself from the desires to have, to possess, to hoard, to dispose of, to be appreciated, to be esteemed, to be recognized, to be valued, to be counted on. Questions for personal reflection. Is everything I have in my room necessary? If someone asked me for it, would I give it to them without difficulty? What would be most difficult for me? Will I be influenced by consumerism in food, clothes, books, the web? If someone sees me as I am and how I act, can they perceive that in my life only G.O.D. is enough? Can I reduce my consumption of anything in my life? For what intention would I do so? Today, concretely, how do I act? Am I more like Matthew, Peter, James or John in their spontaneous reaction, or the rich young man who reached his limits? Constitutions number 29 reads, By our serious and unselfish work, we associate selves to the redemptive work of Christ who labored with his own hands in Nazareth. We also make selves one with those who toil in the midst of suffering and are in need. Remuneration for our work will be the ordinary means of livelihood for the community, but we must always keep in mind that our motivating force is to collaborate in the extension of the reign of God. We are convinced that we have received everything from God. Therefore, our apostolic activity and service of others ought to be permeated by a spirit of gratuitousness and generosity. This allows us complete freedom to respond to the most urgent needs of our time. Questions to share as community. In our lives, in fact, there is a healthy tension between paid work and gratuitousness. Do you think that in our community, we live this tension in a healthy way? What are the greatest difficulties? We suggest you visit some of the web pages that come in the PowerPoint on social and solidarity economy, the one that most catches your attention. Try to relate some of the proposals you find there with our lifestyle or our apostolic works and activity. Does it shed light on any possible changes? How would you do it? 4. Example, we can relate the ideas of time banks to the volunteering we organize or accompany. How do we want to live synodality this year at the economic level? How do we want the economy to enter into our community project so that we can look for new ways and evaluate the results? The way to share in community will be with listening circles. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. 